Good morning. I pray that you have had a wonderful week. And that you've been blessed by this uh, new year. So once again, happy new year to everybody. And I pray that we have already started grasping the blessings of the new year. We have already started engage, engaging into the spiritual warfare for which we have the victory in Christ. Remember our revelation from the Lord was the Lord was going to do amazing things for us and with us. And ever we should have a spirit of a warrior, a spirit of spiritual warfare. For some of the things will come our way as we worship the Lord. But some of the things we have to get them by force through spiritual warfare. And I'm going to explain a little bit of that in our sermon. So I pray that you are ready and you're ready to kick off this year on the right note, on the note of sanctification, on a note of prayer, obedience, on a note of holiness, on a note of worship and praise, on a note of the ability to see and to grasp the blessings of the Lord, the will of God. Shall we pray? Lord, in the name of Jesus, it's always a celebration for us to get into a new year. How many times, God, we celebrate something new and then sometimes very soon we get used to it and it's no longer as beautiful or as exciting as it used to be. But God, as we enter 2021, our prayer is that you are going to renew our joy every single day of this year, every single week, every month. Hallelujah. You are going to reveal yourself to us in a special way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God Almighty. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Jehovah. Be magnified, be glorified in Jesus' name. Bless us with your presence always. Bless us, hallelujah, with amazing love, your amazing grace, your amazing presence in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Continue to teach us, continue to lead us through, hallelujah, for you are amazingly God. We bless those who have traveled. We bless those uh, who are still far away and are probably coming back this evening. Oh God, from, from travel, from, from a trip, we bless your name, God. We bless your name for every person that is connected right now. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. That you have brought us together to be in your presence, to be. Hallelujah. Kea Bosaya Basanta. There's no God like you. I magnify your name. I glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for blessing us with yet another day. Hallelujah. A day of worship. A day of praise. A day, hallelujah, to hear your word. A day to magnify your name. A day, God. Koya sedebo santa mai ne gloria. Hallelujah. Be glorified. Be magnified, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I glorify your name. I magnify your name. Reba shede bo santa mai ne gloria. Oh, yes, so. Reshide costa ine mai ne gloria. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jehovah. Rekina senta. Naya santa ma shide bo santa gloria. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, bless us, bless your word, bless your, this service of worship, 
bless your people. Hallelujah. On this side of the spectrum and on the other side of the spectrum. Those who are here in this room right now and those who are together with us through our YouTube channel in the name of Jesus God. That they are going to experience your presence and feel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power. The power of your faithfulness. The power of your grace. Your mercy. The power of your love. The power God of your compassion. The power of your word and your presence in Jesus' name. Be magnified. Be glorified. Be exalted. Our Lord and our Savior and our God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Our God is great. And it's good. We only live by His grace. our God. All we have to do is just open our heart and let our worship go to our God. We shouldn't have to make a lot of adjustment or any calculation because God sees our heart. So in this moment, I just want you to
You are good, oh God.
Promise keeper. You are the light in the darkness of our lives, in the darkness of our hearts. You are the light. That is who you are, God. A way maker. Huh. A promise keeper. A miracle worker, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your power, your authority. Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing presence, your overwhelming nature, your sublime existence. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. And victory belongs to you. And in you, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Love this made me. Can keep on, can go on and on and on and worship Jesus and praise his name for he's worthy to be worshiped. He's worthy to be praised. And I pray that your life and my life be a life of worshiping Christ, a life of praising his holy name. About two months ago, I spoke about the altar of prayer. And right after that, I was supposed to get into the other altars in life that we need to be de to destroy. We need to pull down. But I didn't, I didn't get a chance because the Lord wanted me to talk about things about Christ. Uh, during that event that was leading to Christmas and New Year. But now I can go back to the altar because the revelation of God is that the Lord is going to do tremendous things with us. The Lord is going to bless us tremendously. We are going to experience miracles, uh, a tremendous work of the hand of the Lord. But the Lord says some of these things will happen to you when you praise God, when you worship God. But some of these things you need to fight. You need to have a fighting spirit. Today, I want to talk about... Pull down the altar of Baal. Because I talk about Babylon and how people worship Baal and hell. And he was a different God, a God in rebellion to God. Pull down the altar of Baal. I'm reading in Judge chapter 6. That night the Lord said to him, take your father's bull, the second bull seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that belongs to your father and cut down the sacred pole that is beside it and build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold here in proper order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the sacred pole that you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the town's people to do it, to do it by day, he did it by night. Pull down the altar of Baal. We need to understand that to every physical action, there is a spiritual force behind. And for Anything in the spiritual realm to have an impact in your physical life, uh, you need to give them a system of authorization. Even God does not just save you. You need to authorize God to save you. You need to give God, God has all power and all authority. Yes, but according to God's principles himself, he gives you that will, you can will to allow God to save you, or you can refuse it. You can reject it. Your will, your choice. You can choose to give authority to God, or you can choose to give authority in your life or over your life to somebody else, to a different spirit, to an idea. You know? A lot of people, a lot of things can influence your life. Who you listen to, which music you listen to, who you follow on Twitter, who, who speaker you listen to, and so on, which re books you read. All of these things can have an impact on your life. And, and, and remember, behind every physical activity, there is a spiritual motivation, a spiritual force. Now, that spiritual force could be good or bad. could be positive or negative. Now, before I get to you in your community, I want to talk to you in your family. Gideon wanted to be used. God wanted to use Gideon, but there was, there was something in his father's house. There was an altar of a god called Baal. Which means in that house Baal had the authority to come and influence and impact the lives of people who lived in that house. But God 
the Lord God Almighty wanted to be the one uh, to lead that house. He wanted to be the one uh, to, to guide that family. And he had some plans to do wonders with Gideon. Uh, God wants to do wonders with you in your life uh, in 2021. But there's something you need to do. The first thing we need to do from the beginning of this year is destroy, uh, is pull down the altar of Baal. See, everything starts with one person. You can start a generational curse or you can start a generational blessing. It starts with somebody. It starts with somebody. And in your family, you can be able to observe and see what are the altars that are in our house. What are the things that are manifesting physically in our home? What's going on in our family? You can actually look and see what's going on. You know, when you do something consistently, that's how you create an altar. You do it one time, second time, the spirit behind that activity feel invited. And then it gets out of control. It becomes an altar and, and later on a stronghold. I'm going to talk about that one. It's another preaching. But anyway, so it starts by one time, second time, and then it becomes what they call an addiction. And, 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 and there's a spirit now that controls your mind, controls the way you do things, uh, and you cannot help anymore but doing it over and over. How many people in life have noticed that this is bad, but they keep doing it. They know this is not good, but they keep doing it. They keep, they cannot control it. They cannot help but do it again and again and again and again because there is an altar in your life. Uh, there is an authority. You have given somebody an authority to control you, to control your mind, to control your moves, to control everything you do. That's an altar of authorization. You and your brother and your other brother, everybody is drug addicted. It's not just an addiction to drugs. It's an altar of drugs in that house. That everybody that goes through that house becomes a victim of a system that has come to have dominion over that house. Of course, we call it generational curse. A generational curse is simply something that is passed on to different generations because there was a first generation that gave authority to a system that is controlling everybody that is born in that house. And everybody that lives in that house go through the same cycle of same cycle. The same things are happening. The same things are repeating. Uh, it's a pattern. Because there is an altar that is controlling that family. And when God wants to use Gideon, the Lord say you need to destroy the altar of Baal. You see, God is calling Gideon first. He's like, Gideon, come. I'm, I want to use you. And when the angel is speaking to Gideon, Gideon is like, me? Oh, no, 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 no. We, I'm just nothing. We are just the smallest family, the poorest family in this, uh, in this town. How can you use me? How can God even choose to use me? Let me say this to you. I want you to pay attention here. It's not your poverty or your wealth. It's not your success or your failure that makes God want to use you. As a matter of fact, we run away from God because there's a system that is controlling us. Uh, there's a system, there's an ad, a different altar that is causing you to behave that way. A lot of people fear to do good. A lot of people fear to be Christians, to be a disciple of Jesus. They actually fear. Like here, Gideon, an angel is right in front of him and say, hey, you know what? God is going to use you. It's like, hey, I, I don't think so. I don't 
believe so because look at who I am. Uh, it's not about his poverty. It's not about his wealth. Uh, it's about the altar that is in his life. Uh, it's an altar of Baal uh, that is not allowing him uh, to give his life to Christ so that Christ can use him. Uh, there's resistance because there's a different authority in his life at that point. And then he says, I want a sign from you. And he said to the angel, I am going to go make a different type of offering uh, on a different altar. Wait for me here until I come back. So wherever Gideon met the angel, he went and made bread and bring, and he came and built an altar and made a sacrifice on a rock. And then the fire of God responded. Once that was done, it's like it's a new altar now. He authorized God to come in his life. He authorized God to come in his life. Huh? And then God said, you know what? You met me here, but now I need to go in your house. I need to go in where you live, in your family. This time, don't build an altar far away. Go in your own home. And destroy, pull down uh, the altar of Baal uh, and build an altar and make a sacrifice on the altar of the Lord. Hmm. Yes, Lord. On the altar of the Lord. What have you been doing repeatedly and you know it's wrong? What has been happening in your family and you know it is wrong? Gideon did it. He destroyed the altar of Baal. And I'm going to get to that. How do you destroy it? Because that's, well, that's probably what people want to hear the most. You know, as Christians, we need to be able to look and see what is influencing my life, what is driving my life. What kind of altar is in my life? Is it fear? Is it love of money, like greed? Some people in their family, it's just everybody just loves money so bad that they can do anything to get money. That's an altar right there. Some people in their family, they all believe that they don't belong. They feel so down about themselves. They feel so it's like, who have you given the authority to impact your life? The worst case will be the devil. Because if you give him your life, if you give him the authority to control your life, he's going to destroy it. Destroy the altar of Baal. How do you do that? Number one, you need to recognize. The first thing is to get the revelation. The first thing is to look and see that there's something wrong. There's something wrong with me. Of course, to the light of the word of God. The word of God is what reveals to you this is the light and when you read the word of God, you realize that you are in darkness. That's how you know. The word of God is the guidance to reveal to you that what you are doing in your life, is no, there's, there's no God behind it. This has nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a different spirit. This is a different master to whom I have given authority to control and drive my life. Recognize that. 
once you see that, once you can recognize that, you need to repent. And by repentance is to be sorrow, to be in pain that that was your life. And once you, rec- you, you, you feel the pain, now you go to God and say, I'm sorry, God. I don't want this anymore. In repentance, there's a stage where a step that is called decision making. You have to make a decision not to live that life again. Mm. You know, I was 11 years old. And my life was full of nightmares. Like I would dream something and I wake up and I see evil spirit in my room. It's terrible, terrifying for a young man, 11 years old. But one day, one night, I prayed. I'm glad that Gideon did it at night, actually. Because we think night belongs to the devil. It, it's quite interesting that it destroyed the altar of Baal at night. Because a lot of people think at night the devil is like the master of the night. Well, there's only ma- one master above all. is Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if it's at night or during the day. Because some people f- some seem to be okay during the day. But when night time comes, they are so fearful. No, 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 no. He did it at night. At night, that night, at 1 a.m., I made a prayer. And I saw evil spirit coming out of my body and leave. And that day, I said to the devil, you've been my nightmares for, my nightmare for so long. I am going to be your nightmare. I'm going to get there. You repent and you make a decision. I said to the devil, I'm going to be your nightmare. You repent. You make a decision not to live that life anymore. You have to make a decision not to fear anymore. You have to make a decision not to do something anymore. You need to say, with Christ, I am going to do this now. With Christ, I stand. Stop this in Jesus' name. You need to make that decision. And then you need to intentionally pray to cast those evil spirits out of your life. But the most important thing, folks, is obedience to God. I'm going to show you how obedience to God destroys stronghold and altars and you name them. This is what happens. So the devil, yes, by doing something consistently, you give the devil authority. But sometimes you don't even do things consistently. Sometimes you are born in a place where the devil is already ruling. So you are born under a curse. You are born under a system that is controlling you already. How do you get out of that? And you're like, I didn't even do anything. But my life is a mess. I can't sleep. I can't feel good. I can see like, it's like there's something in my life that is controlling me. You, you cannot trace back to see this is what I did for this to happen. You did nothing wrong. But you, the only thing wrong you did, you were born into a system where the devil was already ruling. Maybe because of somebody who lived before you. Now, how does the devil get to a point that he's got, he's got full authority? Because this is very important. I really insist. A lot of Christians ask me, why is it that I've been praying for so long and this is not stopping? It's a good question. The devil does not fear your prayer. The devil does not even fear your fasting. I'm going to show you an example in the Bible. How can you imagine Jesus who is God? <laughs> Jesus is fasting for 40 days. The Bible says he came out full of the power of the Holy Spirit. But the devil is waiting for him to tempt. 
Oh my. Isn't that interesting? How many times do you pray and fast and right after your prayer you see like there's some evil spirit coming to visit you at night? <laughs> and you're like, how come? I just prayed all day. He's not scared of your prayers. He's not scared of your fasting. I'm not saying fasting and praying is not important. I mentioned it's like number three, right? Pray and destroy and fast and do all these things. But number four is obedience. He comes to Christ and says, hey, you know what? If you worship me, I will give you all of this. Why obedience to God is the greatest weapon to destroy altars and strongholds? Because of the way the strongholds are formed. The devil forms his stronghold through deception of the will. He's controlling the will of people and government. That's how he does it. He's trying to make even Jesus believe that. For you, Jesus, to get dominion over this world, I have to give you that authority. See how the devil is clever. The devil goes before God. He's not scared of being in the presence of God. But how can you explain the devil that can go to God and talk is afraid of Job. He's like, I went down there, I saw Job, but I could not touch him. It's quite interesting. The devil cannot touch Job, but he can go in the presence of God and talk. <laughs> Let me get a little deeper. Nobody serves God. Nobody is forced to serve God, not even in heaven. Everybody that serves God, they serve God willingly. Even the devil was serving God willingly. That's why he had the power to rebel. It's not a must in heaven to serve God. It's people willing to see how amazing God is. But the devil had even the, a way to seduce even the angels of God. Can you see that? Because it controlled the will. It corrupted the will. You came to them and talk. And say, hey, what do you think? And by the time you, you know it, one third. That's a lot of power. To seduce one third of the angels of God. To be on his side. It's the same technique over and over. The devil does not fear your prayer. The devil does not fear your fasting. What the devil fears is your fear of God. When you fear God, when you obey the word, look at Jesus, every single temptation of the devil, he took him where? In the word. When you obey the word of God, there's something around you that the devil is too much for the devil. The Bible said Job was a man who feared God. And because of that, the devil came around so many times. Uh, and he's like, oh my, I cannot touch this guy. He even went to God and said, just allow me. <laughs> Every system of Power comes from God. I want you to understand that. Every authority comes from God. The devil was given authority. But his authority was corrupted. So God can give you authority over the devil as you obey God. That's how it works. Jesus said, all authority was given to me. God is the giver of authority. See, when you give authority to the devil, you remain a slave. But when you authorize God to, say, to come and save you, God does not just have authority over you. He gives you authority. 
over the devil. And that is the fruit of obedience. The devil corrupts your will. He corrupts your mind. He knows how to play with your mind. He knows how to play with your will. He knows you can pray, pray every day. You can be the greatest prayer person the world has ever seen. You can say, I pray 24-7. Praise the Lord. It's a good thing. But let me say this to you. If you pray and do not obey God, your prayer is useless. But if you obey God, even when you just say, hey, one word. If you obey God, uh, one word, uh, and the devil runs away. Listen, so many times I've seen evil spirits, whether in my room, my house, and I'm like, God, what is he doing here? Say, I want to teach you something. They can come into your presence, but they cannot touch you. You know, for those who have nightmares, I remember when I was a kid, I was so scared of the night that all night I'll be op- my eyes will be open. But then when you think about it, why is it that when your eyes was open, the devil did not come to destroy you? You wake up in the morning, <laughs> you were still alive. <laughs> if he really had the power to destroy you, he was going to destroy you at night. You're going to spend a week without closing your eyes because you're so scared. But every day you wake up, every day you're alive. What do you think? And then I began to think. So I open my eyes and I see nothing till morning. Okay, I'm just going to close them. <laughs> because the, the thing is, you wake up tired because you did not sleep. That's what the devil wants. He wants to get you tired. That's all. He knows how to play with your mind to control you so he can destroy your body. So many times I wake up and I look and I say evil spirit. I'm like, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. When I woke up at five, if you're still here, I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> and I sleep and I wake up. Sometimes I wake up at five and I see the evil spirit still there. Let me say this to you. The system the devil is using to control the mind and the will of people, that's why a demon always wants to go into a human being. Because when I cast out a demon, he goes out, he begins to wonder does not have rest because where the spirit goes, there's a system that is controlling them. So it's better for the spirit to go back in a human being rather than to be out there because there's a system in the spiritual realm that is not going to make them rest. They're still looking everywhere. Where can I go? When can I find refuge? They want to come back into your life. They want to come back and destroy your life to please their master, the devil. Only one thing can stop them. When God surrounds you with his shield of glory, the devil can come in your presence, but there's nothing he can do until is able to corrupt your mind. He wants to corrupt your mind. He wants to destroy your mind. And it can go from an individual to a family, from a family to a community, a territory. And that's sometimes the idea of the devil to corrupt the mind becomes what they call culture. It's because that corruption uh, has got into a community. And you begin to say, this is our culture. <laughs> It goes from an altar to a stronghold to a principality. Second Corinthians. From the day I said to the devil, I'm going to be your nightmare, he never came back into my room. So it's just a matter of decision. When you obey to God, you resist the devil. Jesus resisted the devil with the word of God. And the Bible says, resist the devil, he shall flee away. There's nothing the devil can stand. There's nothing the devil cannot stand like the word of God. Second Corinthians. You know, I love this guy, Paul. 
Paul was not just an apostle. Paul was like a person who got deep revelations from God. You know? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I was going to say chapter this, which is this is in French. Chapter 10. I'm going to read 3 and 4. See, French is so much in me. That's how the devil wants to be in you. So that when you speak, you speak devil. When you think, you think devil. So to corrupt your will, control your will. That's why obedience to God is a very, it's an amazing step. Pray in obedience to God. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. Indeed, we live as human beings, but we do not wage war according to human standard. See, our war is not carnal. It's not the flesh. It's spiritual. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human. They are not carnal. But they are they have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy argument or mind and every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God. See? And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. See, that's how you destroy it. When you begin to obey Christ, when you begin to tear down every thought that rises above Christ, everything, the devil is trying to twist everything uh, for you. He's trying to twist even the word of God. He's trying to seduce uh, everybody so that you go beyond Christ. Uh, how many people think they love more than Christ? How many people think they are better preachers than Christ? Uh, how many people, once you begin to think that way, uh, you have already been seduced? See, the devil even almost seduced Christ in Gethsemane. Christ was like, no, God, can you take this away from me? Listen, uh, even the wife of Pontius Pilate, uh, she had a dream. Uh, and they say, uh, she said, oh, they showed me a dream. This man is innocent. Don't kill him. Uh, the devil can even give you a, a dream that looks like something good. Uh, only so that Christ cannot be killed. And so that there will be no salvation. It's very clever. He knows how to play with your mind. Uh, he knows how to. That's why it's very important for you to know the will of God uh, and, and submit uh, and subdue and surrender to the will of God. Uh, that's the greatest weapon uh, to destroy, uh, to destroy the altar of Baal uh, is to obey God. Uh, Gideon did just that. God said, go and destroy the altar of Baal in your father's house. He obeyed God. And next thing you know, the people of the time all rose against him. They wanted to kill him. Because they were all under Baal. They were all under. And that's what the devil has done. Maybe your neighborhood is under him. Uh, maybe, maybe the country you live in is under him. Uh, your government is under him. Uh, maybe so many things uh, are under him. Uh, but let me say this to you. It doesn't matter how many people the devil can seduce. Uh, God, look at you individually. You can conquer the enemy by obeying God. In, sec in Philippians chapter 5. Uh, chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible says, having you the mind that was in Christ. See? The mind of Christ. He obeyed God to the cross. Look what happened after that. He was given the name above all names. When you obey God, God puts you in a position where the devil can even come into your presence. But you have authority. Authority over the devil. Authority over the enemy. As we get into 2021, look at your family. Look at the house you live in. What are the altars? Uh, 
Be careful. Listen to your children. Listen to your parents. What's going on in that house? What do they dream about? How do they sleep? What's going on? How do they feel? And lead them to Christ. To obey the word of God. Nikia Santa. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you One last testimony. I was coming from doing evangelization door to door in a town called Kenya in the Bumbashi. And after walking under the sun from like 9 a.m. to about 1 p.m., four hours going f- door to door with one of my spiritual sons, it was only the two of us preaching Jesus Christ. After being so tired, we went to a place. There was a little kiosk where they were selling soda. And we bought, I think, eight bottles of soda. They were like small bottles of soda. And that man, and we said to that man, can you make, can you make us a deal and give us one more for free? You know? We sit here, buy one, get one for free. It happens. And that guy said to us, explicitly said, you want one for free? Don't you know that in that one for free, that's why I put my witchcraft. So if I give you one for free, I'm going to bewitch you guys. (laughs) Yes, Lord, I love that kind of environment. I said to him, give me that one for free. Give me your witchcraft. I am going to drink it. But you are going to cry in your stomach. Your witchcraft will go back to you. Crying. He said, are you sure? I'm like, I'm sure. Are you sure you want to do this? He's like, yes. He gave me one bottle for free. I drank it all. The next day, I went to evangelize. The kiosk was gone. Everything was closed. You have power in Christ Jesus and the power is in your obedience Deuteronomy 28 says if you obey I will give you superiority over nations the greatest weapon to destroy altars and strongholds in your life is obedience to the word of God that's why Paul says the mystery is Christ in you. Christ is the word. Uh, the living word of God. The truth. Hope of glory. Christ in you. Hope of glory. Repent. From things you've been doing forever. Things you've been doing constantly. There are people who cannot help to lie. Uh, you lie every day. You are corrupt every day. You commit adultery every day. You cannot even control it anymore. It's not an addiction anymore. It's an altar. You have invited into your life a system uh, that is controlling you and your mind. How many people have convinced themselves they are good people? The devil is very clever. You do everything against God uh, and you convince yourself uh, that you are such a good person. Uh, it's an altar, hallelujah, that has even become a stronghold. A stronghold is a system that gives a demon power. That's why Paul does not say we fight with spiritual weapons to destroy demons. He said to destroy strongholds a demon we cast them out they are not a demon is like nothing believe me a demon is nothing it's the system that gives them power the system you authorize in your life that gives them power if Christ if your life is an altar for Jesus Christ then no demon has power over you God gives you the authority If you subdue, you surrender completely in obedience to Christ. The evil spirit, the devil, Satan will run away from you. 
to run away from you. The devil used to attack me all the time in my dreams. Today, I sleep peacefully. Today, I talk to God in my dreams. I talk to Jesus at night. And sometimes when I open my eyes, probably like 3 a.m., as I'm talking to God, I see some evil spirit passing on top of my house. I say, hey, where are you going? Your mission is over now. It doesn't matter where they were going, whether they were coming for me or not. I have that authority to say, you are not going to do anything in this neighborhood in Jesus' name. And I stop them because we have power in Christ. Is the devil your nightmare right now? You can become his nightmare. I became one at 11 years old. Hallelujah. He's playing with your mind. He doesn't just want you to sleep so that you can wake up tired and you can make more mistakes during the day because you are tired. That's all he wants. There's nothing he's going to do to you. Nothing. He doesn't have the power to kill you. He's making you think he has that power. And that's how he plays with people's minds. The, de- the Bible says we destroy arguments. <laughs> and we subdue every thought to the thought of Christ. To obedience to Jesus Christ. As you begin 2021, destroy, pull down the altar of Baal. Destroy the stronghold of the enemy in your family. Don't say that's how it is in my family. Everybody's just like that. It can change. And God has chosen you like he chose Gideon. You may argue the way you want. If God has chosen you, God knows better than anybody. If you think the devil has power, he got it from God. As a matter of fact, he got it from God when he was in heaven. And then he corrupted it. But God can give you authority over him. Because the giver of authority is actually our our God. Pull down the altar of Baal. This one also comes to me. In In 1999, I was praying in the house at night. And I noticed that every time I prayed, you hear like some weird birds outside. You hear like some rats <laughs> all around the house, some, some noise outside. And one day I was like, okay, is that what you want, devil? You want to scare me with noise outside when I'm praying inside? I'm going to come outside. I want to see what's going on outside. And believe me, I went outside. Now, I, when, when I pray in my house now, there's no noise outside. Do you know why? Because the devil knows if there's noise outside, I'm going to go outside and destroy everything he put outside. So he better not disturb me. Obedience to God puts you in a position of authority. See, it's amazing how you give authority to God, but God gives you back authority over your enemies. But when you give authority to the enemy, he destroys you. He destroys you. So it's up to you. As we're going through 2021, do you want to destroy the altar of the enemy and build an altar for your God? That's what they, uh, Gideon did. If your spouse is cheating on you and you get angry and you are right to get angry and then you say men are just like that. You have just bought an idea from the devil and you just confess it with your mouth. Men are dogs. I am a man. I'm not a dog. 
because I refuse that will of the devil. That's how he plays with your mind. I am a child of God. I'm going to talk later. This, as we go through the year, I'm going to teach these techniques of spiritual warfare. The devil plays with your mind. Destroy the altar of Baal. Pull down the altar of Baal and build an altar to Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. People of God, this is the time to give back to the Lord, so please send your offering or tithe via Cash App, PayPal, or Zelle. 2 Corinthians 9, 6-8 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Yeah.
of God it is true that God loves us all but the devil has twisted it in our society today people continue to do bad things and all they put in their head is God loves me anyway I agree God loves you and me but God's love leads you to transformation God's love transforms you it leads you to obey God the devil is very clever. The best way to resist the devil is to obey God. Hallelujah. That will make your prayer powerful. That will make your prayer powerful. Pull down the altar of the enemy. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God. The Bible says we can only fight with divine power because you, we cannot face these things with our human power. So grant us your divine power, God. Hallelujah. Grant us your divine power. As we enter 2021, we want to enter in this year with your divine power. Power to resist the devil. Power to grasp the opportunity to serve you. Power, hallelujah, to, to obey you, hallelujah, to surrender to you. Moses says in Psalm 90 verse 12, uh, help me count my days so I can apply myself to wisdom. And wisdom and the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Lord, teach us to fear you. Teach us, God, to obey you and not obey the devil. To fear you, not fear the devil. In the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that as you have chosen us, one, another, and, and another, and in different families, uh, that you are going to use us, God, in sanctification ministry, the way you use Gideon to destroy the altar of Baal in the house of their father. Koya Sayaba Santa. In the houses we live in today. If there's an altar... If there are altars that we need to build in our homes, uh, is an altar of sacrifice to the Lord, Jesus Christ. Altars of prayer. Hallelujah. Continue to bless us with wisdom and revelation. Continue to guide us, God. Uh, hallelujah. As we study your word, uh, you said to Joshua, meditate this word uh, day and night. That's how you are going to succeed. That's how you will prosper. Koya Santa, Basayne, Maine, Gloria. We magnify your name, Jesus. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. We lift your name on high. Continue to use us and to strengthen us as we face warfare in this world. 
You told me something. Life itself is a warfare. Prosperity is a warfare. Everything we do, ministry is a warfare. And in that warfare, we get authority and power in you, Christ, uh, as we obey you and surrender to your will. I bless your people with your word. I bless your people with your power. In Jesus' name. Bless this Sunday. Bless the coming week. Uh, let every day of their lives uh, remind them they have an altar to build uh, for their God, Jesus Christ. Uh, and they have altars to destroy. Uh, the altars of the enemy. You told me something. You don't, you don't, you don't succeed. You don't fight stronghold uh, by blaming your parents. You don't fight stronghold uh, by blaming Christians. Uh, you fight stronghold by obeying to Christ uh, and prayer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I bless uh, 2021. Uh, I want people to experience the authority of God. Uh, that's why even when the life of Job uh, was destroyed, uh, there was no other option uh, than to rebuild it. Uh, because obedience to God uh, leads to rebuild. I thank you God for families you are going to rebuild in 2021. I thank you for lives uh, you are going to rebuild uh, in 2021. And I proclaim the joy of the Lord. Give us the mindset that was in Christ, Lord, our Lord and our Savior. A mindset of obedience. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Ooh. Mm -hmm.